Welcome to this Gorilla Guide webinar to integration, understanding your data integration options. On this event, you'll hear from experts at Progress and Click. Thanks so much for joining us on this Gorilla Guide webinar. My name is David Davis of Actual Tech Media, and I'll be serving as the moderator. If you're not familiar with the Gorilla Guide book series, that's what this webinar is based on. You can go to gorilla.guide. You can also find it there in your handouts tab, and you can download full length, completely free educational eBooks around a wide variety of IT topics. You want to do some reading this weekend, catch up on the latest and greatest in enterprise technology innovations, check out gorilla.guide and download to your heart's content. Before we get started with this Gorilla Guide webinar, there's a few things that you should know about the event. We've got some prizes. I'll be talking about those here in just a moment. We want this to be educational. We encourage your questions in the questions pane, and I'll have a few poll questions for you as well on the screen. And we appreciate your participation in those. We want this to be a social event as well. You can find a variety of social media icons there in your console and we've got a hashtag for this event as well over on twitter there's a number of resources in the handouts tab i encourage you to check those out hand selected resources by our expert presenters and also links to the gorilla.guide and the new gorilla guide podcast which i'll be talking about in just a moment the prizes for today are three amazon 100 gift cards you must be live in attendance to qualify for these prize drawings. I'll be announcing the prize winners throughout the event and we'll contact prize winners via email after. All prize winners must submit an IRS Form W-9 to Actual Tech Media. Full prize terms and conditions can be found in the handouts tab of your audience console. Over the years, we've donated thousands of dollars to charities thanks to generous prize winners. If you win a prize and you'd like to donate the prize value to charity, we would love to help you do that. We've donated to the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund and One Tree Planted over the years in partnership with the Gorilla Guide Book Club. Again, check it out in your handouts tab. The Twitter hashtag for today is Gorilla Guide. Over on Twitter, you can search for that hashtag or if you tweet, we encourage you to attach that hashtag and share what you've learned on the event. You can follow Actual Tech Media and me, David M. Davis, as well over on Twitter. We post all of our latest and greatest content over on LinkedIn, so make sure that you follow us there as well. Now, I'm excited to be announcing here for the first time on the Gorilla Guide webisode that we've just launched a new Gorilla Guide podcast called Inside the Guide, Navigating the Technology Jungle. We've already got three episodes released out in the iTunes store. Episode one, where we cover Kubernetes at the edge in 5G and telco. Episode two, where you'll learn about distributed Kubernetes in retail environments. And episode three, that covers distributed clouds and Kubernetes as a service with the CEO of Platform 9. Again, make sure that you check it out over in the iTunes store. You'll find a link to it as well there in the handouts tab. Now, before I introduce you to today's first expert presenter, I want to talk for a moment about today's topic, data integration. It's a big challenge for companies all over the world. No longer do we have these single monolithic applications. We're using best of breed applications. We're using distributed applications. And these applications need to talk to each other. They need to integrate in order to really provide value. I mean, the data that we have, it powers the world. The world runs on data. We've got data in space. We've got data being used in healthcare, saving lives, data in engineering, innovating new technology. I'm sure you've heard the saying that data is the new oil. It's the new gold. For most companies out there, their data is the real value, their real secret, their real intellectual property. It's all in their data. But in order to use that data, in order to get to something like this, where you have intelligent AI driven tools that can help you to make smart business decisions, that can help you to outthink the competition, outmaneuver the competition. In order to get to this, you need data integration. And data integration doesn't always happen as easily as we would like. There's a lot of different pieces to the puzzle and fitting all these pieces together in order to make business decisions and create business value can be challenging. 
you've got a lot of different pieces. You might have HR, finance, marketing, social media, general ledger, manufacturing, engineering, supplier data, partner data, and customer data. And that data is distributed all over the world in software as a service applications, in the cloud, on premises, at the edge, on your employee devices. But if you're on the event today, it's likely that it's your job in some way, shape or form to bring all that data together into some sort of business driven, comprehensive intelligence solution and work some kind of magic to organize this chaos of data. Thankfully, we've got some really awesome solutions on the event today. You'll hear from experts at Progress Software and Click, and you'll learn how they can help you to solve your data integration challenges. I'm excited now to introduce you to our first presenter. Welcome Joelle Andrews, Senior Product Marketing Specialist at Progress. Joelle, take it away. Hi, I'm Joelle Andrews, Product Marketing for Progress Data Direct. The story I'm sharing with you today is about a day of data or how Progress Data Direct powers our everyday adventures. Okay, so we are going to walk through a day in the life. And as we do so, I want you to think about how much data is involved. So this is just an idea of maybe what your day might look like, my day might look like. So let's say first thing I get up and I head to the gym. Then I'm coming home from the gym and it's time to go to work. So I pull up my computer and open up Tableau, run some sales performance metrics, once run some website metrics, you know the deal. Then it's time to head out after lunch and I'm gonna have to go to a couple places so I know I had better stop and get some gas. So I'm at the gas station, at the pump, I put my credit card in, you know, that's running and as we start thinking about the data connection here, I've, I'm using the gas pump, I'm using the credit card system. Think of all of the data that's headed in different directions. You've got the financial side of things, the distribution side of things, all the way down to the, the places where that actual uh, oil came from in the first place. So here, here's our feeling introduction into the data. Uh, so now I'm leaving the gas station and I'm on my way to a doctor's appointment. So I get there, I have to check in, uh, I'm telling them who I am for their system and I'm also handing over my insurance card and that's going into other parts of the healthcare system. There's even more data right there. Now, everything thankfully goes well at the doctor, but it's time to go run those errands before I head home. So next stop is to the auto parts store. And here I need to buy some windshield wipers. So I've got a Honda. I have no idea which of all these windshield wipers is actually gonna fit my car. So I ask the person at the counter and they have a system that tracks inventory. Uh, it's gonna know which ones I need. It's gonna um, track when I buy the windshield wipers that I need. So there's the inventory, it's sending details to its warehouse. Uh, all the way back to letting the windshield wiper makers themselves know that I've done this transaction. And then the last stop in my day before I can go home, I need to go over to the grocery store. Got to pick up some milk, yogurt, cereal, that kind of stuff for the next day. So all of the things I'm buying, well, again, inventory, the grocery store is keeping that inventory. They have sales reports. They then tell their distributors, who then tell the food producers, et cetera, et cetera. So just in these six interactions in a day, you think about the big picture. I was interacting with data the entire day. I was consuming it and producing it. And pull back from just me and realize that there are millions of other people around the world having very similar days to mine. It really doesn't take long to realize that companies need a way to make sense of all of the data being produced by people like me and everybody else. So what does this have to do with Progress Data Direct? Well, we help businesses make sense of their data with cloud and on-premises data connectivity for relational, NoSQL, big data, and SaaS data sources. So if we go through my day again, you'll actually see how each of these spots uh, might have had me interacting with a DataDirect customer. So let's start with the gym. 
One of our clients, one of our data direct clients is a major fitness company. And the reason that they were using data direct is they needed to connect their Salesforce to their AIX server via ODBC to get connected to all of their BI tools. Uh, they're using our Salesforce driver to be able to do that. When I was doing my own work as a Progress Data Direct employee, I was using Tableau, and that's actually calling on data from our own cloud data warehouse. And I'm using Tableau and the other applications to visualize everything just in one spot right in those dashboards. Uh, so at Progress, we use many of our own drivers. We use Salesforce, Google Analytics, Oracle Eloqua, AHA, and have that all connected into our Tableau visualization system. When I went to the gas station and I was pumping gas, well, it's very possible that those actions were becoming data points for one of the energy services companies that's our customer. And this customer in particular that I'm thinking of, they're using our ODBC connector for Salesforce. When I was at the doctor's office and I showed my insurance card, well, one of our major clients is a big insurance provider. And the reason they're using DataDirect is they needed to migrate from IBM AIX over to Linux 64-bit. And they're using our ODBC SQL Server driver to make that possible. And then also at the doctor's office, that might have been part of the health system client of ours that needed to expose their Salesforce health cloud data to an internal application. And so for them, they're using our Salesforce JDBC connector. So you see where I'm going with this, uh, but let's just complete the day. Over picking up my windshield wipers at the auto parts store, well, that is a major uh, auto parts chain that's a client of ours. And the reason they're working with DataDirect is that they needed to connect their Oracle BI reporting tool to Snowflake. And they needed a particular ODBC driver, which does not exist natively. So they're using the data direct data direct SQL link ODBC to JDBC bridge, and they're connecting to the native Snowflake open source JDBC driver. And then finally, at the grocery store, that yogurt and cereal and those things that I were picking up, well, one of those brands is a, a client of ours, major food brand, and they're using the data direct hybrid data pipeline for its OData capabilities so they can connect Hadoop to their Salesforce. So that's a day in data. And as you can see, there's so much to the world of data connectivity. And all of us are experience it, experiencing it throughout our day, and we're really not even noticing. So Progress Data Direct, it's very possible we're always behind the scenes. We help businesses of all types and sizes navigate their data challenges. We can help businesses create their own custom connectors with open access SDK can help you bridge REST APIs with SQL using autonomous REST connector. You can share or consume on-premises and cloud data with hybrid data pipeline, or use one of our pre-built data connectors for JDBC and ODBC connectivity. We work with businesses of all kinds, and whether you're an enterprise user who needs data connectivity within your own organization, or you're an independent software vendor and you want to embed our connectivity into your application or service, does not matter. We help out all of the, all of the above. So no matter what your data challenge is, we are here to help. And you can come find us at datadirect.com. When you're there, feel free to contact us or download a free trial of one of our great data solutions. We are happy to assist and can't wait to meet you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Joelle. Really appreciate that. Uh, I look forward to our upcoming Q&A here after the next presentation. So if you have a question for Joelle about data direct and data integration, uh, now is the time to get it in there in the questions pane. Of course, we encourage your questions and we want this to be educational. So I've just brought up a poll question for everyone out there that says, what additional information would you like about the progress software solution? And I'll leave that up here for a, a minute. Uh, let everyone respond to that. And uh, we appreciate your feedback again there on the poll. Keep in mind that this is a multi-select question. So, you know, feel free to select more than one option on that. 
All right, thank you for the questions coming in there for Joelle about Data Direct. We do appreciate those. Uh, keep those questions coming. If something's on your mind, like how it works, how to implement it, how it connects to uh, multiple data sources, uh, just drop it there in the questions box and I'll queue those up for our Q&A. All right, and thank you to everyone who responded to the poll question as well. We appreciate your feedback. Let's keep the Gorilla Guide webisode here moving. And with that, I'm excited now to introduce you to our next presenter. Welcome, Mr. Dan Potter, Vice President of Product Marketing at Click. Dan, it's great to have you. Take it away. Hello, my name is Dan Potter. I'm the Vice President of Product Marketing at Click. And I'd like to introduce you to our approach to modern data integration. First, a few facts about Click's data integration offering. Gartner has stated over the past two years that Click is the fastest growing provider in the data integration tools market. And there's a reason why. You know, we've been delivering leading edge solutions for over a decade, uh, satisfying over 2,500 customers around the globe. And our approach to automating and modernizing data integration really relies upon a close relationship with our partners, providing an open platform, multi-cloud support, and we've been honored to be partner of the year with many of our partners, including most recently with Microsoft and Snowflake. Um, you know, we are no stranger to moving data to the cloud. In fact, we've moved over 250,000 databases to the cloud with our technology. So let's talk about some of the use cases and some of the challenges that you're faced with. You know, you've got a whole host of different enterprise data sources, core transactional systems. Uh, some of these may be older than the people maintaining the systems like mainframes. You've got modern SaaS applications. Uh, you've got SAP applications. Most organizations have a little bit of everything. Many have a lot of everything. Uh, so the challenge here is how do you unlock that data in a modern way uh, and generate change data streams so that as the data and metadata change, I'm capturing those changes. I'm delivering those where it's needed to clouds, to data lakes, to warehouses. And I'm automating the refining and the merging of this data to create analytics ready data sets. And the three big areas that, that you're probably challenged with. First, you know, how do I replicate a committed transaction from that on-prem system into the cloud and into new modern databases, PostgreSQL, Google Cloud SQL, RDS, and others? Um, the other thing that we've seen is, is Kafka being a really important, uh, both a distribution mechanism uh, as well as even a persistence layer for organizations. So replicating those committed transactions and doing this with change data capture is a wonderful way to do it over the wide area network into a cloud. Second area is around cloud data warehouses. And we've seen just a, a complete shift in from on-prem enterprise data warehouses to more modern cloud native warehouses, things like Snowflake, uh, Synapse, BigQuery, and others. So the challenge here is not just moving that data in real time using change data capture, but creating and maintaining uh, those data warehouses and automating that process. And same thing with the data lake. You know, the challenge is here that it's file oriented. How do I take this constantly changing data from a wide variety of heterogeneous sources? How do I merge and stitch that together, keep it transactionally accurate? Uh, but most importantly for, for both a warehouse and a lake, uh, is how do I catalog this and make sure that business users can find, understand, trust that data, that data stewards can protect that data uh, in an automated fashion, and your data engineers who are building these pipelines can, be, uh, can ensure that the data set is meeting the needs of the business user, making sure that we do a quality inspection uh, on that data. If there are issues with the data, we automatically suggest you know, where to modify that data to make it fit for purpose within the enterprise. So these are three big use cases and repositories in which data gets moved uh, and stored and managed. Uh, on the consumption side, you know, the catalog also plays the role not only for finding the data, but provisioning out directly into tools like Tableau and Power BI and, of course, Click Analytics, uh, making this available to AI and, and ML processes and data scientists. So kind of an end-to-end -end automated pipeline starts with unlocking enterprise data with change data capture, 
moving that data, automating the creation of anal analytics ready structures and making it easy for business users to find and consume that data. Now, foundational to this is change data capture and data streaming. Uh, our approach to this is agentless. So nothing needs to be installed on the source system. There's very little overhead and impact to those production systems. They can continue to run. We automate the target table creation, the instantiation, all of the mapping. Uh, so again, you can unlock all of these on-prem systems, move them directly into the cloud, into whatever target you choose. Um, our approach with the agentless uh, log-based change data capture is really a perfect complement as organizations are moving to the cloud. And that's why you know, the majority of, of large organizations are, are looking at Click to use change data capture to move that data in real time and efficiently. But moving the data is just the first step. Again, one of the big use cases is around cloud data warehouses, and for good reasons. You know, the elasticity, the scale, the cost effectiveness. But as you're moving to these new platforms, you need to rethink how you're going about uh, defining and managing and, and coding. You want to take a more automated approach to give you the agility that you were hoping for with the move to the cloud. And that's where data warehouse automation comes in. So it's a model-based approach uh, where you define exactly what you want the models of your data warehouse to look like. We automatically generate uh, the code. We push it down to the target environment like a Snowflake or a Synapse or BigQuery. Uh, does the table creation, the instantiation, the mapping, uh, all of the handles all of the real-time uh, data replication. If you want to generate data marts for end users, it's a wizard-based process, so it's very, very easy to, to meet di diverse business needs. If you want to add new tables uh, or new data sets, again, it's a very, very rapid time to value. And we take a similar approach with data lake creation. Uh, again, you've got data from a wide variety of different sources. You need to be able to pull this data in, uh, merge and stitch this data, create analytics-ready structures so that you can really derive the value that you were hoping for in creating a data lake. Um, foundationally to this is change data capture. Uh, but again, it's all about creating these analytic structures and making them available into the catalog. So doing this right requires that high scale data pipelines, kind of that end to end automation. Um, it requires, uh, again, moving away from costly scripting uh, people doing the work to a more automated process and being resilient. Uh, you know, because we're using change data capture, we're able to detect changes not only to data, but to metadata as well. Uh, and we can make these pipelines resilient. So if the source uh, metadata changes, someone creates a, a change in the structure of the table, we can automatically uh, respond to that, regenerate, and keep your analytics up and running. Um, so that's one of the big benefits of having a fully automated end-to-end -end process. And I talked about the role of, of catalog. Um, again, it, it really suits three different personas, the data engineers, the data stewards, and of course, the business users and the consumers of that data. You know, it's not just about storing uh, the, the metadata, the technical metadata, but it's the operational and business metadata as well. So we can fully uh, catalog all of the sources within your enterprise, not just uh, the data that you're moving into the cloud and the pipelines that you're creating, although all those data sets are automatically registered into the catalog and governed, um, you can register all of the sources within the enterprise. Um, this, is, this provides a lot of value in that before you start to do integration and movement to the cloud, profile the data that you have, understand uh, issues that you may have before you move it to the cloud. Um, so from a data engineering perspective, lots of value. Uh, from a data stewards uh, perspective, again, standardizing, normalizing, uh, providing automation and how data is protected. So things like PII data or other business sensitive data or regulatory data can automatically uh, be detected and uh, either masked uh, or uh, we can ensure that the right users uh, only have access to that sensitive information. And finally, from the business user's perspective, you know, 
being able to find the data very quickly, being able to understand the operational effectiveness, the quality, the popularity of the data set, understanding the lineage, where did it come from, how is it modified, by whom and when, all of these things provide the necessary understanding and trust so the business users will, will, again, harness the full value of all this investment that you're making as you move data to the cloud. And the final thought here is, you know, it's it's a pretty challenging time. If you're an enterprise architect, there's a lot of choices that you need to make. You know, the the landscape seems to change every day. You know, data lakes, uh, data warehouses, enterprise warehouses on prem, cloud data warehouses, uh, data lakes, and and lake houses. Um, yeah, Kafka and and its role. You know, there's a lot of uh, movement within the data architectures. And if you take the right agile approach with data integration, and you're able to take advantage of these next generation technologies in a way that's not disruptive, right? So having an automated end-to-end -end integration strategy where you can change out the different targets and fully automate that process will provide the agility and the value that you're looking for. So this is a quick 10 minutes on, on an introduction to Click Data Integration. Uh, go to click.com to learn more, and we'd love to talk to you about some of the challenges that you're faced with. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Dan. Really appreciate that uh, quick overview there on Click and how it can help to solve data integration challenges. I've just brought up the poll question for everyone out there that says, what additional information would you like on the Click solution? And now's the time if you have a question for Click to get your question in, because we're about to start our Q&A here in just a moment. So I'll leave the poll question up for a minute here, let everyone respond, and then we'll jump into our live Q&A panel discussion. All right, thank you to all of those who posted questions that are in the questions pane for our uh, Q&A session coming up. We do appreciate that. Also, thanks to everyone who responded there to the poll. We do want your feedback on, you know, just what additional info you would like or next steps uh, on the Click solution. All right, so with that, it's now time to kick off our live Q&A panel. I'm excited to bring back in Joelle Andrews, Senior Product Marketing Specialist at Progress, and Mr. Dan Potter, Vice President of Product Marketing at Click. First question is for you, Joel. The question is, what SaaS data sources are supported with DataDirect? Great question. Uh, we have a lot of data sources supported. Um, some are SaaS, some are things like uh, Big Data, Cloud Data Warehouse, but uh, of everything that we've got, you can actually come to our website, uh, datadirect.com, and check it out. There's really a long list of pre-made connectors that people can just grab off the shelf and do a trial of. But then also we have some other neat tools and um, those are other good ways of creating connectivity to uh, SaaS data sources in particular when APIs are involved. So you might wanna check out Autonomous REST Connector if that's what you're looking for. Excellent. Next question's for you, Dan, over at Click. They're asking, can you change the data warehouse target when you use data warehouse automation? So one of the advantages of data warehouse automation is the agility that it provides, both in terms of adding new sources or modifying uh, the models, but also changing the destination. If you want to be able to move from uh, one vendor to another vendor or from one cloud to another cloud, uh, it's as simple as pointing the data warehouse automation target and changing it. Everything else stays exactly the same. It automatically generates the SQL optimized to the target. Um, so again, this is one of the, the real benefits of having data warehouse automation is that you, know, you have the complete agility to change uh, as much as the business requires it. Very nice. Thanks for explaining that, Dan. And then another question for you, Joel. They're asking what data reporting tools are supported with DataDirect? I can see why that would be a question, because uh, in my um, overview, I was mentioning Tableau, but that is definitely not the only BI analytics tool that uh, you can connect to with our drivers. Um, Power BI is another popular one. 
Uh, and then also I'm just thinking MicroStrategy, Board, IBM, TIBCO, uh, really anybody out there, uh, if they've got some sort of reporting tool and you need connectivity to it, we're probably going to be able to help you out. Thanks, Joelle. Uh, Dan, back to you at Click. Uh, they're asking here, what's the latency of change data capture? Change data capture is often described as real-time data movement. Um, it, but it's, it really, there is latency involved in it because the transaction needs to be written to disk from the um, source database. Uh, so there's always going to be some latency. Uh, in practice, you know, we have customers that are moving uh, data from on-prem into the cloud in sub two seconds. Uh, one in particular uh, gave a presentation, a keynote presentation at one of the cloud vendor uh, events last year. They're moving over 60 million changes per hour in sub two seconds and replicating from a mainframe uh, into a variety of different cloud technologies. So it really runs the gamut uh, from a couple, couple of seconds, but most organizations, when they think about real-time business needs for analytics initiatives, it can be five minutes to 15 minutes. Uh, in some cases, an hour is, is real-time. So it really depends on uh, what the business requirement is. And, and also, you know, there's cost consideration too in terms of compute. So when you're committing uh, and merging that data in a cloud environment, there is compute charge. So you're trying to balance the, the business requirement uh, with being cost effective. Thanks, Dan. And then Joel, next question for you at Progress. They're asking, how do you create custom drivers? There are several ways to go about that, actually. Um, one, if you're if you're not seeing what you need just off the shelf of our uh, data sources that we already have connectivity to, you could potentially use something like our autonomous REST connector solution, which is helping you get connectivity to APIs. Um, some people want the whole shebang, and so they end up using our open access SDK, and that gives them all the flexibility in the world with some simple coding, but you know we provide most of the materials that you need and they're able to build their drivers that way. And then if none of the above suits you, we can also discuss doing a tailor-made solution. And to get that done, you would just wanna reach out, press the contact us button, tell us who you are, and we'll see if we can help you out. Very nice, thanks, Joelle. And then Dan, next question for you they're asking is, does Click support a lakehouse architecture? So at Click, you know, we've worked very closely with vendors like Databricks, who have really been at the forefront in defining a lakehouse architecture. Um, and the answer is yes, uh, we support lakehouse architectures. But if you look at, you know, what a lakehouse is trying to achieve, uh, it's really about broadening the types of data that can be brought together for analysis. It's it's making, uh, you know, data lakes. Uh, behave more like a data warehouse or a data warehouse be behaving more like a data lake, right? Encompassing uh, more and more data, kind of decoupling the data storage from the compute uh, and the engines that are being used to process this data so that data can be queried. So with our, our automation solution, we support both warehouses and lakes. Uh, and again, it depends on the, on the business requirement. Uh, in some cases, having it structured uh, for queries in a warehouse or star schema uh, makes makes better sense. In some cases, having it uh, as analytics ready data into a data lake uh, makes more sense for AI and ML and, and data scientists. Uh, but regardless of what you do, having an automation solution really helps uh, organizations get the full value of what they intend as they move data into the cloud and embrace new technologies like data lake houses. Excellent. Thanks, Dan. Joelle, back to you. They're asking, how do you find that most people use the data direct solution? Mm -hmm. um, I touched on that a little bit at the, the end of my presentation, but to go into it more detail, we have some customers who, you know, we think of them as direct enterprise users. Those people are using our connect connectors for their own in-house, maybe an internal project or something where they need to connect a data source, let's say to a, a BI tool. That's one way that people go about it. But we also work with a whole host of ISVs, uh, independent software vendors. Sometimes they think of themselves as OEMs, 
Um, but those are partnerships that we create with other companies where they then embed our software into their own stuff and pass that out to their customers. Uh, so there's two different ways to go about engaging with DataDirect. Excellent. Thank you, Joelle. And of course, thank you to Dan at Click as well. I want to remind everyone that both of these solutions, the Progress Data Direct solution, as well as the Click solution, both have try it now, try for free buttons right there on their website. You can check these solutions out, give them a spin for yourself. There's no replacement for that, getting some hands-on experience. Uh, and I'm sure both companies would be glad to help step you through the process so that you can see how these solutions can help you to solve your data integration challenges. And with that, it's time for our prize announcement. We've got three Amazon $100 gift cards to give out on the event today. These are going to Brianna Push of Nebraska, Ed Andrino, Ed Andrio from Kansas, and Alfonso Nguyen from California. Congratulations to all of our prize winners. I will post the names in the uh, questions pane as well. And before you go, uh, I want to remind you about the all new Inside the Guide podcast over in the iTunes store. We've got three episodes uh, that are already released. So make sure that you check those out. In fact, after the event here, I'm going to be automatically directing you over to the landing page for the new Inside the Guide podcast. Uh, we've got three interviews here with experts from Platform 9, uh, and not just experts actually, but their, their CTO, head of uh, solutions engineering, and their CEO uh, from Platform 9, talking about distributed clouds, uh, Kubernetes as a service, and more. So make sure that you check out the Inside the Guide podcast. And of course, for more information on Progress Software, check out the Handouts tab right there. First link will take you to Progress dot com and the second link is actually a download uh, of a solution brief on the click software solution so make sure that you check that one out as well thank you everyone for joining us today on the gorilla guide webisode on understanding your data integration options i hope that you learned a lot and have a great day see you next time bye bye